Hi, everybody. My name is Panda, and I'm with the boys. Yeah. Yes. Hello. And special guest uh, is Cam today. Hi, Cam. How you doing? The Rage the Canadian Hello. is in the house. Raging? AKA I would say the, the Notorious. Cat. I, 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 you're pretty raging, aren't you? Uh, no, I'm pretty calm. You're pretty calm? Ish. Calmish? Amish? Yeah. I, I, no, I mean Amish. calm. Calmish? <laughs> calmish sounds like, you know, he could be an angry Canadian. You never know. I mean, what yeah, is what right, is too. calm as a Canadian? Uh... That's just, that's most people, I would say. <laughs> Except for, like, when oh, they drive. <laughs> that's just something every that sounds does. That sounds like white. Everyone says, oh, oh, like passive-aggressive sorry or something. Or, like, passive-aggressive <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm sorry! <laughs> like, you didn't open the door for me? Like, well, thanks! Thank you! Well, well, welcome, everybody, to the first episode of the podcast here. Um, Name TBD, because we uh, forgot about that during a... Uh, everything um yeah I well remember the name. yeah i don't remember the name it either. sounds like an std now yeah it might be an std I'm well, okay welcome that. to nebraska I'm you guys are gonna catch tbd you're going to catch <laughs> tbd that is like seriously bad what are i don't even know what, what that is there... i'd like to know the what? symptoms please <laughs> the, 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 the symptoms are uh growing corn at your anus um oh. and oh. possibly dehydration because you're shitting out the corn at your anus what if what if we're like known for growing everything? Cause that's what we do up here. <laughs> oh, do you grow it all out of here? There's, like a lot, a there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. There's a lot. That, that's how around. they. That's how they. Uh, they produce uh, maple syrup. Wait, wait, no. To be honest, there's actually a lot of corn around my city. So makes and sense. Maple syrup and maple syrup. So yo, it's funny because there's not as much corn as people would so, expect around ours. Question. Yeah. Question. We're, from, we're more from, beef. What? From a Midwesterner. Question. Um, <laughs> maple syrup. In the Midwest, it can be like fifteen dollars a bottle for the good stuff. Yeah. What is the rate of maple syrup? We're, we're dealing with two different currencies, uh, though. Uh, let me see. Let me see what I have in my cabinet. I think it's like for like a liter. That's twenty some dollars, I think. Holy at least. Well, it's about the same then. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, yeah. By Canadian, though. I mean, it's Canadian like, dollars like, might be worth more like, than American dollars no, at this point. No, no, no God, no. <laughs> I, I think you no. Know, Cam told me once it's like, uh, it's like seventy-five cents per it's seventy-five cents to the dollar. Oh, so, damn! It's awful. That is god awful. It's been wow. awful for years, and I hate it. So yeah, I got like two dollars. <throat> you'll have like I got Canadian money too. You'll have like, so like an extra fifty cents, bro. We need to bring like hundred dollar bills over to Canada. We can all have and, them. and be faux rich over there. Yeah. I can barely get them out of my fucking pocket. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, like, like you guys, you guys probably, probably don't even have like the superior, superior maple syrup. syrup. So I mean, see, yeah. See, he's got like that. They have the listen, syrup. listen. I was just trying to have my own euro. Listen, thing. do you have any in your house right now? Huh? Let's go dig through your cupboards. Yeah. I don't. I don't think. Any... I I think the most maple syrup I have is like Aunt Jemima. Get, Get the, the fuck, fuck out of here. here. That's not even <laughs> maple syrup. I, I, fucking syrup. No. I got apple and, syrup. And, and, we only, and we never even had to enter my mouth. I mean, we do. But it was the other brand. It was like a French brand called like Habiton or something. There you <laughs> go. That sounds like <laughs> when that was Happy Tom. That was like, <laughs> Happy Tom. It was like the knockoff shit for $3. Listen, listen. <laughs> You're talking about the country that has basic peanut butter. We don't even have that. They have Basic? <laughs> he <laughs> called your peanut butter basic. Hold on, what are the it? intricacies of peanut butter? Like, I'm lost here, man. I'm, I'm... What? what? I don't know, is it crunchy, smooth? Uh... It's just two types, like, what is that? <laughs> no, no, I'm serious, they have, like, this, this weird peanut butter. <laughs> Where do you get your nut? <laughs> what, what, what nut? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, uh... This chat is devolving quickly. <laughs> I told you this is gonna be wild today. Uh... <laughs> So, so, so uh, I Cam, I know that you're you're an avid gamer. You like to you like to click games. You have like yes. uh, um, what is it like Mario sixty four, um, the Adventures of Link. I have like okay, I have almost all the Zelda games complete in box except for two of Game taste. Boy games, and I basically got all of like the games I owned as a kid on N sixty four complete in box, and then just. I find random, random games, games here and there, there. And, and like consoles, consoles and shit, shit handhelds. And helps, but uh, uh, like last, last weekend, weekend, I got a custom Game Boy Advance that has like a, like a Minish Cap, cap shell, shell on it, on it with an LED, LED screen. screen. And oh, then I yeah. got 
uh, a Japanese, Japanese version, version of, of Pokemon, Pokemon Silver. Silver. <laughs> oh man, that can't, nice, can't have been cheap. <laughs> oh no, oh, actually, what? the Pokemon was cheap as shit. Because <laughs> it's Japanese, Jeez. I assume. So like normally that shit goes for like four hundred dollars uh, uh, for the English, for the English version. version. Yeah, so, so like that Game Boy you got, it has like the aftermarket IPS screen or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, those things are sick. I built one actually last, like, I think two years ago actually for myself. Yeah, you're right? SP. really fun. You still have mine. You're still trying to. Yeah, I can replace your speakers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. when I saw oh, it, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, not get it. So like, first of all, it's diminished cap, so oh, yeah. I had to get it, yeah. and. It was. I don't. I don't have I don't my original, have original Game Boy Advance from those kids. So they have, have a, a new company <laughs> making a metal shell for them now too. That I thought about actually <laughs> checking out. Yeah, it's like a straight solid metal shell. There's metal. Button. Oh. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, that would have been. Yeah, that would have been sick. what's up. It's that would have made it. Could you engrave that? Much better. Uh, you could. Probably. You could get a laser. I'll see why you uh, laser etched. That sounds dope. That sounds yeah. like it's panda proof. <laughs> but yeah, they sell the kits for those online. <laughs> I thought about rebuilding a whole new one, getting a white IPS screen, black metal Here, casing. Wait, wait, wait. As uh, someone who uh, collects all the Zelda games, what's your favorite Zelda, and why? Uh, Ocarina. Ocarina. Um, mm-hmm. because it's just overall, overall really good story. story. Gameplay is amazing. amazing. Um, first three D three D Zelda. And, and it's like, like, and it's and like, like the second game, game I got, got on my N64 because the N64 is my first, first, first console I got as a kid. I think it was like seven, seven maybe, maybe or seven or eight, eight when I got, got it, maybe, maybe six. six. That, that well, Golden Eye was the first game. game. That game collapsed. Golden Eye is a classic. Yeah, yeah, no, but definitely a great time. And then I would say Link to the Past because that one, I don't know, I just like the dungeons in that one a lot, and it's just kind of easy going. But there's, there's still some of them I haven't beaten, beaten, so I still am slacking. <laughs> Which ones are on your uh, backlog? Uh, Majora's Mask. Uh, I've never, I never owned it as a kid. It's stupid. stupid. It's, um, a great, it's a great follow-up talk, Arena. Majora's, and I still need to beat Tears, Tears of the Kingdom. Kingdom. Word. Understandable. Understandable. That's, That's it. it. Oh, oh, and I, and I, and I, I never, never played, played through Wind Waker. Waker. Like, I have a physical have a copy, copy now, so I'm going to play that. I partially, I partially played, played it, it, so I have, like, halfway, halfway done, that, done that, and I think that's it, just those three. So, since you own, like, a lot of these from, from their physical copies and these older uh, consoles and stuff, how do you, like, how do you feel about, like, the Switch's emulators? They're, like, they're, like paid, paid service? service? Well, just in general, how do you feel about, like, how it operates when you play it, or if you've ever played it or anything like that? Um, would, how, how would you compare... The um the switch gameplay versus like the original is I think this way he's asking yeah like your experience with it, it. depends it on the game, game like honestly, like, honestly. um I still, I still think I prefer, prefer playing, playing on original, original like, like the controllers the original. yeah but I do I like do how like I don't have to pull out my N sixty four and hope it works, works to, to play the whole <laughs> game or I can just fucking play it play on the switch now I would say though I was really hyped up for the Golden Eye. Re, uh, release on the Switch. I was gonna mention that. Complete dog water. I was gonna mention that. Like I remember when Golden Eye dropped and it, everyone was hyped and it was just complete garbage. Now, uh, go um, to follow up on your on the Zelda stuff you was talking about. I know uh, Link here is very. He's he loves Zelda games. Oh my god. What what's your yeah. favorite? Oh, it's got to be Twilight Princess. I've been waiting for you to ask the entire time. But what, why is it Twilight Princess? Why does that beat Ocarina? It's not. It's not that it beats Ocarina at any at anything. It doesn't because what... well, it certainly has to be. If you if you're raking your top games, right, there has to be aspect of a game that you like more than let you. Let me ever. let me explain. Let me explain. Okay, so with Ocarina, everything that uh, Cam said is correct. It was it was it was beautifully made. Good story. Good gameplay. It's a ten out of ten game. It's still a ten out of ten game. Mm. <clears throat> but but. <laughs> But with Twilight Princess, that was one of the first games that followed the same kind of gameplay style where they added oh, something that was just completely unique to the series. Yeah, I think it was. Uh... And also like the dark tone to it. Yes. Yeah, it, it was, was more mature. It made it more of a oh, mature, more mature type. It, it had, it had, be... yep, it oh. had its elements of, the, of Ocarina, but also taking and on that. For me, it, it had the same amount of pull towards, you know, you want to play the whole game and, and see it all the way through to the very end. 
just as much as you wanted to with the original. Funny enough, I actually agree with you. Twilight Princess is my favorite Zelda game. It's, it's the one I most remember. Twilight? It's the one that I wish they would do a port of, but of course, you know, they'll do every other Zelda game but that one. They did it for like a week, didn't they? Yeah, but no, does that, that really count? That was like really that's so long Wii ago. That's what, what I on the, the Switch. That was my, one, that was my right? second the Wii U play version. Me. Yeah, it was on the Wii U, but the fact so is, like, that was so long ago now that people. That doesn't even, that doesn't count, even count too. That's like, like all they did the Wii, was Wii U, uh, one console ahead of each other. <laughs> yeah, what what they did for the Wii U one, they uh, made a HD graphics. Uh, I guess you call it HD. It was 720p. <laughs> um, and they also uh, flipped it. They flipped the screen, so everything was uh, reversed. No, that was the GameCube versus the Wii, actually, because the original copy was on the GameCube, and the game was one way. And then when they released, no, you're the correct. Wii, you're correct. Yeah, they rele- They flipped it. Extra nerd powers activated. They they flipped it because people, more people are right-handed, and Link is chronically left-handed. Correct. And they oh, wanted what? people to use that for the Wii motes. So you're right. You're right. Yeah. You corrected me, bitch. <laughs> that's, that's what you get for being wrong um all right cam never question for you bud yeah uh what's your uh, favorite gaming men- memory of all time memory oh man uh what what's your leroy jenkins <laughs> of your gaming oh, leroy history jenkins? i feel like i would have had a lot of those playing games with my friends i don't know i actually my friend actually said i had a, I had a game party yesterday so my all my friends are there and shit and my one friend, like my best man, he said, you know, remember that one time we just spent a whole March break sitting in your house playing Goldeneye? And we were like, like teenagers. That's what we did. We just played Goldeneye for a whole week straight. That shit was pretty good, but I don't know. I wouldn't say there's like a real specific memory. Because like, I've you know, been gaming for 25 years, but I don't know. They've all been pretty good, though. How, uh, was you was you the bitch of the group that used the midget? <laughs> oh, oh, I, I played the shit out of Odd Job only on uh, Nightfire. You know, that, you know that? You know that game? I don't remember his name, so I said midget. Yeah, but the first part tells how uh, much aggression you had going against him. <laughs> He's like, I hate yeah, him. You know, like, that little bitch. Like, okay, woo. <laughs> he he was broken though. Oh yeah, you know, only on uh, only on Nightfire version that game. That game was fucking great. You know, uh, my one of my favorite game, gaming memories is playing uh, Time Splitters Two. Oh my god! Uh, with my uh, with one of my brothers back in the day. That game was fun as fuck. I'm actually supposed to play that with one of my friends because he always talks about Time Splitters Two to his wife, and she's like, "Oh my god, shut up about Time Splitters Two! <laughs> it's really good." Uh, so he's like, "We should play it on my Steam Deck." <laughs> My favorite gaming moment is when I finally reached level 75 in Original Zombies, and it was with a crew, Damn. and we did it online, and it was, it, and we could never do it again. It was like capturing lightning in a bottle. It, it was, it was crazy. Like, the original zombies, like the first yes. one, like, you know? we were on Ascension. We were doing the Easter egg, and it was crazy. Oh, shit. You, you know, uh, speaking of group memories, um, one of my favorite memories of Cam. Cam is, is an interesting one. He's a very interesting man. I read the chat. He, That's one he, way of uh, putting it. Uh, <laughs> listen, he uh, he's a great multitasker. God. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> the fact that he's laughing already means there's something behind there's we, a story to this. We was, okay, so yeah. we brought a group into like a late level, like uh, I think it was a like trial in Final Fantasy. Right. And this man was playing Overwatch comp. Right. Yeah, ranked Overwatch. Just playing ranked Overwatch and playing Final Fantasy fourteen at the exact same time. Holy moly, what was he and he play? was the healer. Yeah, I was doing fine. We That's won. That's mad respect, dude. That's some mad respect. You you was doing okay, and then uh, uh was it Jesse or Bubbly where her fucker name is? <laughs> yeah, Popped yeah, out of nowhere and she's like, Cam, what the fuck? You're supposed to be helping me here. And I she did. was we still won. <laughs> <laughs> and I still got Oh, this criteria no, no. for success this isn't is like great. demanding, but it's there. This man, <laughs> this man is the only man I know who can win a cop yeah. match in Overwatch and also beat a trial in Final Fantasy at the same I, time. Hey, I had a moment it's... similar where I was oh, playing Battle Royale with my brothers on Call of Duty, and I was playing Master Duel with my toes, and I beat the guy. Oh yeah! And we won the match. Toes? And he, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. your hand was broken. I, yeah, because I mean, I'm playing with my hands. I gotta shoot people, turn and look, and parkour and run and do 360 dumb boy flips. <laughs> <laughs> 
tell him how, how your hand was broke too. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was like around the same time I got into an accident as well, and my fucking inner wrist was shattered into like 15 pieces. Yeah, oh. I'll say it was like 13, 15 pieces. Yeah, so I'm playing crippled, also playing master duel, and I'm winning in the duel, and we also won the battle royale. <laughs> So I, I felt impressive. I felt like a king that day. That's that's impressive. Ultimate achievement. On the <laughs> you don't you don't rest <laughs> for the recovery. You always gotta play. <laughs> There's been many times playing with Cam in Final Fantasy where Cam would just fall asleep. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I'm so notorious for that. I used to do it all the time playing. Uh, so I played Cataclysm for like very brief time, uh, with my friends and like yeah, I'll be in a dungeon and be like snoring away. It's like you wake up. I'm like, what the? <laughs> we need help. <laughs> I and of course, Cam so always fine. Cam always plays the healer when he decides to pass out mid game. <laughs> it only happened. And don't even like say it only happened like, once. I have like five screenshots. He stopped, he stopped and thought about it. <laughs> I have like five screenshots on my computer of you just falling asleep in the Discord call. I saved. I saved that picture too. I was like, I have my webcam on. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, amazing man. that you guys ex accomplish anything. It is really amazing that we oh my finished God, anything. Yeah. yeah, I finished expansion. <laughs> I, I don't. Even, I, I'm not even done with the current expansion. I haven't done the rest of the really? MSQ. No, oh fuck God. that. I mean, it's fine to be burnt out too. So burnt that out happens. a long time ago. Man, well, fuck. I cra I get on like very rarely, but I'll just go on and I'll I'll use my character and I'll just bake desserts. We. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go pick. I'll go pick like vegetables and fruits, and then I'll just cook and that's, bake. That's awful. <laughs> really. You just get on to your NPC shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just in the background. Like I'm gonna make the best meal I can today. I I remember when we all uh, started playing. We wanted to start a guild, and we was like, "Fuck, man, we don't have enough money to and, start everything." And we made a guild. And, and no, hold up, just... hold up. And we was like, fuck, we don't have enough money for any of this. And now I'm sitting at like 150 million kill. <laughs> yeah, you barely do anything anymore. I don't you need go. to. <laughs> Shit. He straight got them job classes. <laughs> it's not even that. It's, the guild self runs itself, which is great. I only go on it once in a while, in a while just to like, to like level a few things, things and whatever. Final Fantasy, if we, if we want to talk about it, Final Fantasy right now is kind of dead. I was gonna say, um, like, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, in our friend group for sure, because none of our, no one, and like our guild plays. But I'm still pretty, pretty like busy. I find in the game. game. I just find it amusing that Panda, like the guild itself, literally, is like him. we don't even play anymore, but the guild still is going and still getting more members and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we <laughs> built something and then we walked away from it, and it just hey. keeps going. Hey, Cam. Let's just admit that I was game. able to keep a, uh, a a guild in Final Fantasy running longer than Anno. <laughs> yeah, it's just that whole situation was so weird. It'd be hilarious like, with the guild. I never guys. got myself, got myself involved, involved in like guild, guild shit, shit, you know, growing up playing MMOs and stuff, and then oh, I only got involved, got involved when I started making friends, friends off of it. Off of it. So, so I'm like, like why the fuck are we not caring, caring about this? <laughs> Did you say the guild itself is almost a year old now? Or the guild itself is over a year. It's it'll over be, a year old now. It'll be two, like two years. years now. No, no, it'll be two years, uh, like a, like the last week in May. <laughs> Maybe yeah, but we've known each, each other for three years now. Yeah, we've known each other for like three years. <sighs> That's fucking crazy. That, that is really crazy. <laughs> Holy fuck. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I don't usually put myself now, out if there. If only we could make a business. Especially in, like, like MMOs, stuff. ever. Here, I just posted my games on the Discord. You post your games on the Discord? play a whole lot of them. The only reason why I actually started playing Final Fantasy was because uh, Panda here actually wanted to play it. And I was like... Yeah, that's how I got... I, I hit him up because I felt like I haven't been talking to him that much at the time. And I was like, I want to play a game with you, man. Let's this play this is uh, Cam's uh, inbox collection on his shelf next to his computer. That's oh, pretty sick. Shit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, GoldenEye, Donkey 64, Country, is that... Ooh, country. that crisp, mint, perfect dark back there looks pretty sweet. Mario yeah, Kart. Dark. Did you uh did you pick up Mario RPG on yesterday? No, no, no I right. forgot no. all about that, dude. I was I was. I, I, I have a few friends. Oh, though. they re-released the Mario RPG. Yeah, they, no, no, not re-released. They remade it. They yeah, added they re more content. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And I have the original for the Game Boy still too, by the way. 
So nice. I, like I, I wanted to play that, and I also want to kind of play the new stuff. Yeah, I probably will just play it on my SNES Classic because I don't have a SNES. <laughs> I don't actually have a SNES, and I'm not gonna buy a ninety dollar game on Switch. So that's valid. That's valid. I've been feeling like I need to try and find games to buy on my Switch because the problem with like having like a PlayStation, a Switch, and a PC is like. I don't want to try and get the same games for each console that I have yeah. across them. Well, I want to have diversity in my gameplay. Imagine how hard I have it. I have an Xbox One. Yeah, but you have literally Skyrim on everything with like I have 700 Skyrim hours and... dipped no, in. No, not one. just Skyrim. Not just Skyrim. <laughs> There's Resident Evil and then 4. Fallout. <laughs> Fallout. And Fallout this, everything. This man will literally, like, he'll Bioshock. re-download them on all of his consoles, every single one, doing an individual new playthrough for <laughs> each one of them, play them the exact same way he's done it before, and go, like, 500 hours deep in it and be completely satisfied, and I respect that. Here is some of uh, Man, our games that Cam has. <laughs> every run through is Skyrim. Even though, listen, listen, you do not understand. If you play Skyrim the first time... Or the twentieth time, you will still find something you didn't fucking see the first time. But Skyrim is so fucking boring. Only for people like you. <laughs> yeah. What? I disagree with that totally. There's no way. It's fucking boring, dude. Yeah, they added fishing, man. Holy shit! <laughs> Buy it right now. What I don't understand is why they didn't add that in the beginning. I, I was because a little salty find, about that. You can find like fishing rods and stuff all over the world and interact with them and shit, but you like they literally were useless up until recently. But this is uh, never picture cam sent. Nice. I love how he has him framed and everything too. Yeah, I would too. My God, he's got a copy. Oh my God, is that an okay? I have to ask. Your copy of Ocarina of Time is that a first edition? I don't know. Um, I actually don't know how to tell. <laughs> I was gonna say, are you are you aware of the lawsuit that happened when the game was releasing? No. Oh. Okay, so first edition copies of Ocarina of Time have an, a soundtrack in the Fire Temple that oh, yeah. is different than second edition copies of the game. Yep. Yeah. It, what was it, Arabic or something? Yeah, it was just like some Arabic some, chant. Yeah, in the background. And they the actually had a lawsuit over it. So first edition copies still have the original sound file, and second mm -hmm. edition copies will not have the original sound file. How can you tell, though? I mean, like, I don't think the game Because I had a first edition, edition copy. No, 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 no. There, there is a way to tell. I'm not a good authenticator for it, but there apparently it's, there's a way to tell on the on the box. There's like a... there's like It's like dated or something like that. There's there's some sort of number that you look at on the box when you examine or it. Or possibly the release number. I mean, the game the itself game could be like some other game that the guy like put in there compared to the box. I don't know. I'm, I'm from this, you just uh, open it up and it's like ET. I'm just saying want, that's like one of the that's, that's one of my Zelda the super fan them. facts. But uh, I buy them from this flea market that's down the road from my house, and every Sunday they are open. And this guy has like a tiny little room with all these games, and I've bought maybe ninety percent of my games from there. And for the most part, some most of them, some are, actually of them are actually good condition. Some, some are whatever. Are whatever I don't care about the condition they are in. I just kind of wanted to have the copies itself. Right. So here's another picture of uh, Cam's uh, collection. Right there is uh, the ga uh, Game Boy he was talking about earlier. That is, yeah. Um, where do you get those uh, holders from? Or did I you make them. those? Right yeah. Them. Yep. So you got, oh, is that the Pokemon game you got uh, recently? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Ooh, question, uh, completely unrelated, but your printer, is it PLA? Yeah, yeah. it is. Nice. I have a resin one, so because I, I do miniatures and stuff like that. But I was just like I'm, curious because I, I like uh, the idea for basically making gadgets and stuff with PLA printers. They're more durable. Right, and stuff. I also like the idea of wanting to have the resin one too because resin just looks so fucking good. When it's it is. Well. It is. But I will tell you now, like it does Pain take a little practice because I mean, I so, it depends on what you go with. I got any cubic, and I I've been enjoying it with the latest software they've done. Um, okay, that's ours that's too. Ours too. Or I just got last week or this week we got it. Yeah. The so I too. mean, they're fun, and they they make some amazing prints. But like, if I were if you were gonna go for something that you're gonna actively use and need durability, I suggest PLA for sure. But if you're doing just like like I said, miniatures and stuff like that, resin is definitely the way to go. It's a pretty sweet Game Boy stand. Hey, um. Doesn't uh your your wife make those? Yeah, don't, I mean, don't she, she sell them? A, yeah, she has an Etsy that she started uh, two months ago. Nice. But currently, go. currently it's, currently it's currently offline, offline because yeah, we had, we had printer, printer issues because we had another printer that stopped working. Oh. But she fixed, fixed it. it. 
She was really stressed out all week long, and she debated on getting a new one. I said, fuck it, I just bought it for her. And so this whole week's kind of been like off and on to make it work to a certain point where she can sell shit again. So there you go. And this is all going towards the the wedding fund. Very nice. All right, let's dive into the news of this week. Um, so the first thing that popped up for us that we was when we was looking up uh, things to talk about, um, there was an article from Metro UK um, about the publisher of GTA Six because you know GTA Six is coming out soon. The new trailer is supposed to come out next month. There's speculation of them dropping the trailer um, during the Game Awards, which is on the eighth or the seventh. Are you telling me? I think it's on the seventh. But the article says eight, so who the fuck knows? Um, but there is, um, what the publisher suggested was a game should be paid uh, per hour played. What's bull- bull- bullshit? bullshit. Yeah, straight up, because I don't want to have to pay for what I just worked before. It has to have fun after this. You know? Straight up facts. So <laughs> if it's going to go that direction, they're going to lose a lot of fans. So oh, like how yeah. how how would that even work though? Like would you just have like a free download and just put your card in there and then like you get billed monthly like a job? No, dude, they can't. I can tell you now, they would not want to pass up the chance to charge you for the game. Anyways. It'd be worse than paying for an MMO, which you pay monthly for. I pay six months, six monthly for. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I bought, uh... I mean, at least in MMO, MMOs, you know, they're like fifteen dollars a month or something like that. You know, like that's the worst that you'll find. And you can play a shit ton in a month. Yeah. Like, if they, they they charge you per hour, I mean, some people, they're putting, like, 400 hours into a game. That's ridiculous. I also hate the idea for the fact that if they even create objectives or goals within the game that do take up IRL time, like, that's just how they can milk you for the cash. <laughs> oh, really? yeah, that's true. Yeah, because not everything in a game is completely fast-paced. Some things take some slow time to accrue. They would... Or even- they would drop a game and then put like missions behind a time also, lock. Also, the way yeah, GTA basically. likes to beat around the bush when they design GTA, missions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so like when you have to drill it through a safe, it can take, a, <laughs> take up to four hours for yeah. a mission prep. Mission prep. You gotta drill through a safe, but you're not exactly intelligent, so you've just been fucking. <laughs> but you've been well, sitting like, there for thirty minutes straight, so there goes like half your tech because you've been trying to drill. It's also the worse too. It's like, like, what if it's a single player game? Player Imagine paying, paying full, full price, price for a product. For a product. And then having to pay extra extra just to play a game you're not using online online service for. That is ridiculous. (laughs) I think the only way that would be acceptable would be if it's like... I don't even know what the math would even turn out to be. But it would have to be a free download. It would have to be a free download. This is the same guy we talked about last time? No, this is uh, Rockstar. This is a different company. Um, They must be taking notes. (laughs) Yeah. Um... Notes. But I don't. I just don't know well, exactly. Take notes. I don't know how exactly the math would work out. But they couldn't be charging more than sixty, eighty bucks for for a month of gameplay. At that point, people would just tur- uh, yeah, exactly. get turned off hey, about hey, it. I mean, how do you put a monetary easy. value on time played? Like ten cents an hour, or like pl- whenever or more you than that? a free game, anyways. The whole thing that kind of gets people to be incentivized to download your game is the fact that it's free so if they had to throw any extra cash on top of something they didn't think they had to pay for to begin with they're gonna feel like they're tricked <laughs> yeah it, it, it's just it's a slippery slope it's just altogether a bad business model uh, in my opinion just a just a i don't even think it's even a hot take i think it's a good take um this will never happen no well, it it's never. not that it'll never happen it's that it should never happen it, <laughs> it won't be successful what what will happen, happen is ea will try this and then they'll face backlash, and then like a month or two later, they'll I mean, go back on their word. People are cool with buying microtransactions, but that's at their own liberty and their own choice. No, this is a step yeah. too far from microtransactions. This is microtransactions this is on the transaction. <laughs> it's a deep yeah. transaction. Not to mention, like, microtransactions are optional and don't affect actual gameplay advantages. For now. And, well, and, and, yeah, for now, yeah. yeah. In most, in most games. games. It does still, actually, in some games, it does happen. But I was going to say, in, in most games, it's usually an aesthetic thing. Unless it's or cell early phone access. Cell phone games. That's the ones that do that shit. Oh, yeah. Cell phone games are so toxic for them. <laughs> They'd be like, pay oh, 99 oh, cents yeah, to not worse. watch ads and also get this bonus that will last for as long as you're interested in like the Like Clash of Clans or something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, dude, Clash of Clans was so big it for the was, longest so, time. Oh my god, it was. For like 10 years, I swear. All the dudes in middle school just be like, hey, see my base? 
Yeah. Like, yeah, I why that. aren't you in our clan yet? yet. <laughs> <laughs> and people will get mad at you for not dropping to another clan. I was like, yeah, why, you or were supposed to go to war today, game. man. You missed out on our tournament or our, our war loss or whatever the hell. I didn't play the game much. <laughs> I tried it. I, I played like, it yeah. religiously back in the it's day. It's called the raid. I didn't play too much. No, there's things I, that go to war too. Yeah, no. So, back during that too? time, I had my first job. He and I, 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 I put, I maybe spent like a hundred bucks in Galactic Clans. Oh my god! Jesus what, wait, was this when you were at Applebee's? That's yeah. Ridiculous, dude. Bro, hundred dollars? I, I probably Come put on, a hundred. Applebee's money ain't Even for that. I'm not that dumb. Come on. I mean, granted, you weren't making the. I was like shit. sixteen. Leave me alone. <laughs> Time talking. Yeah, we need to slap cash, yeah. Marshall. No, Waste yeah. Waste the money. Yeah, that's fucking true. Waste of fucking I money. I remember uh, getting uh, um, hated on because I, w- I was called like a base booster. Because <laughs> 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 like they, they knew, they knew. I well, you can't money. hide that. There's literal hours they make you mm-hmm. wait just to upgrade something. They'd be like, "This is your like seventh upgrade. All right, just wait two weeks and three hours." <laughs> oh my goodness! It was Ain't nobody bad. got that kind of time. Exactly. Oh, that's no. why I put a hundred bucks in the game. <laughs> that's why I. That's why I stray away from phone games. And then so, how long, long did you play it? <laughs> uh, probably a year. Although oh, shout God. out to Niantic though for making some of the best phone games. I made a couple that I've downloaded, and that's only as far as like their Let's Go games. Basically. I would I would go so far as to say maybe the uh, yeah the Monster Hunter one is pretty fun. I've been playing it. I got already like four Anjanats marked on my freaking uh, oh. paintball thing I so I can to... go hunt that T-Rex and bash his face in. I still have to get through the beginning of it. <laughs> Wait, why is he fascist? Ba- 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 I'm going to beat up a dinosaur, man. <laughs> you ever played Monster Hunter? Uh Oh, lots, yeah. Yeah, so uh, they have the Monster Hunter Now mobile app. See, I always, knew, I always knew you were a man of taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wants to taste you, man. Anyway, <laughs> wait, hold up. He, no, an alien, listen, not a zombie. That's listen, you. Listen, listen, listen. It, it, reason why Link wants to taste Cam is because he wants to scientifically conclude that if Canadians sweat, if it tastes like maple syrup. Mm-hmm. Why do I feel like that's something it, you, you know came how up awful with? That would be? Decided so to push sticky? that on me. Oh my god. Cam's like, you know how bad. You're so I'm sticky and syrup. like gross. <laughs> but maybe you're just used to it. That's you're... like asking if if. <clears throat> Pardon me, Lucci. That's like asking if you sweat guacamole. <laughs> Why couldn't it be fucking lime juice or like fucking hot? Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> right, but, I feel grosser than him because mine's all like fucking creamy or chunky or whatever, bro. <laughs> imagine you got imagine like it was like two different like uh, Sorry, sets of jeans. Juice. Is that better? Jalapeno juice. It, it was like two different sets of jeans. Like some people uh, just like sweat out like smooth guac. And some just like chunky just, block. It, it could be oh. like your earwax. You know, you either got runny earwax or you got the one that like, crumbles up in dust. <laughs> oh my goodness. You got the Shrek earwax. Ew. Hold out a whole ass no, candle. No, that's, 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 that's like Scots, okay? Almost, <laughs> almost all the Scots are like that. Just throwing shade at Scott. He can't even be here to defend himself, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get I'm gonna get beat. That's what's going to happen. Some Scotsman's going to come along and be like, You! You are talking bad about me! So, the next uh, next story we have, uh, I, admittedly, I don't know too much about it. Um, I'm not. I haven't watched uh, JGK yet. Oh, I haven't watched the second season either. So um, their go the ahead, second Luch. season is really important, obviously story wise, right now. I watched the movie. Yeah. After, yeah. After, yeah. So I mean, it's introducing characters of various timelines and stuff like that uh, from past and future or past and and now. New characters that are uh, it's it's all hype right now. Like these new episodes, they look really great right now. But Mappa has just kind of uh, well, they've been kind of pushing pushing their workers a, like a little too hard again. And there's been times where it's been a little controversial because they worry about the quality of the anime. And with it being at such an important state in the story, they're just really concerned of how it could affect it. Do I smell a studio strike coming? <laughs> there, there might be. I was doing some more digging into this article. Um, they was talking about how fans are bashing for uh, for poor work conditions, and also okay, what's, uh, what's poor, poor work, work conditions, conditions though? Like I like working a long hours? Like I don't get that. Um, I mean, from what I hear, their long hours involves them sometimes sleeping at the studios and working oh at their multiple days. Jeez, 
So like they, can, they call yeah. it like black label work out there, and what like oftentimes it's like abusive or toxic bosses that make them stay in, in work of long hours that can sometimes can, uh... have them staying. And and this is a uh, like just to build upon this. Um, this article is also referencing how uh, there's a season two episode that was unfinished yeah. that was released. It was uh, it was episode seventeen of season two was not finished when they dropped it. Only thirty percent of it was finished. Yeah, they're they're so, pushing they're releasing them by the time that there's like last second basically. <laughs> so That's really the whole part. the whole issue is like uh, I think this ties into uh, crunch culture. I guess is that even right the right thing to say? I don't well, I like, forget like, what like, the, on a, like on a time crunch you mean like or what do you mean? Well, okay, there was like a big buzzword especially when like the Last of Us 2 dropped when everything was like uh it was like called like crunch Culture. You mean exploitive well, pretty much, business techniques? Pretty much they overwork their employees to get stuff down yeah. to a deadline. Yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what's saying. happening, yeah. And there's another anime that makes reference to that, too. That's uh, called ZOM 100. And Definitely they, worth a watch. They ha- <laughs> yeah, it is. I've heard, I've heard it's pretty good. Watch the first episode. If you don't love it from there, then you probably won't like the rest. But My it, friend suggested me to watch it, so. Yeah, I, I, I like it. The dude's trying to find a way to live in a zombie apocalypse, not try to survive it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but, uh, I actually relate a lot to this um, whole workers being overworked and shit. Because yeah. uh, my wife, wife works, works in the in animation, animation industry. industry. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it, it's, it's shit like that, but like over she there. She used to be an skin. animator. Uh, yeah. Until she went to production, production, and she worked on like she worked for Disney. Disney? Like, like her client, her client was, Disney. was Disney, and like, like children's, children's shows and shit. And her company that she used to work for pushed them so long. Like, yeah, too much work all the time. Very underpaid. Uh, I mean, appreciated. Bosses were shitty. Yeah. Um, too many deadlines that they yeah never push because oh no the client needs them now and the client needs to work now and you can't push these back and yeah it's heavy pressure dude we need we need to interview uh we need to interview about the disney work work culture oh my god it's awful it, it, was, it wasn't so much it was like partially disney but at the same time it was also just her the company she was for just really shitty and the, the, the people in charge just have no clue what it's like to actually yeah. work, work a business well people at the top once they get to a certain point they no longer uh, identify with their fellow persons mm-hmm. the the first episode zom 100 does a great job of that their logo that they use for that fictional company is actually really close to another studios that the people who made that anime worked for and they reference them as the company for the exploitative work purposes. They kind of do it like a shout out to like this is what what happened to us. Oh my god! There. And it's great. I love that. Like when you don't when you know about that, it's it's even better. It actually, it's, it's worse too worse right now. Yeah, I don't know if it's happening, happening over there and, and where, where they make they them, but in her industry, industry there's like, like a massive, massive layoff, layoff in this past, past year. year. This past six, six months. months uh, uh, all, how a lot of her friends were in the same industry. I think maybe. Four or, four or five, five of them, them lost their jobs. Their jobs. So, and most, most and then like a lot, lot more, in more, in more in her studio just got laid, got off, laid off for, for you know nine, nine months. months. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no work. There's no fucking does, work. So what does she do? I know you said that she you you mentioned that she does she, like production. She, she, she's so production. So she oh god, it's hard to explain sometimes. She basically coordinates, coordinates uh, the, uh, the work, work between, between the animators, animators and. and it's mostly, mostly animators, animators that she works with, with that, like, that, like, get all the frames in, in the work in, to get, get they're reduced into set episodes and, like, get them, like, get them uh, made. made. Like, on Fridays, Fridays are called, um, her delivery day, so she always has to work late on Fridays, and then, and then that's, that's when the, one the one episode, episode, or that section, section of the episode has, has to be sent, sent out, out to get approved, approved by, by the, the um, uh, client. So, are you able, uh, I know a lot of, some stuff might be secretive. Um, but are you able to mention anything that she worked on? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can mention past stuff. Uh, she worked on, she was an animator on Hilda, the, the show on Netflix. She worked on okay. season one and two. Uh, she worked on Lion Guard. Um. Oh, man, my, 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 my niece loves that one, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, awful to work on. Awful to work on. on. <laughs> <Awful laughs> Wasn't that bad? When, when, when you have 50 animals in the background and, like, animating, like, 20 things, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I can see that, yeah. Uh, uh, Tangled, she worked on Tangled, like, the, t- the TV show, like, the that one. Um, 
some other, other yeah, yeah, some other some little things, things too. too. Oh, uh, uh, Kid Cosmic, Cosmic. she's done that yeah, one too. That's, <laughs> that's also on Netflix. Netflix. Uh, yeah, a yeah, lot, a of, lot Netflix, of Netflix. Shout out, out, out a lot of Netflix shows and maybe a few Disney shows. Yeah, man, I've seen Netflix actually has been doing that with a lot of artists. Like, there's this guy I watch, uh, like John Sava or something like that. He's he had a few, I think one or two Netflix movies that he's made, and it's actually helped him kind of like release of his other artworks he does like posters and watercolor paintings and stuff yeah i've noticed that when netflix isn't trying to make a live action the stuff's usually pretty good there was there a, there animated, was a there lot animated of shows mixed, but also positive like, results yeah, about one good. piece that's about the only one i've heard that actually had positive reviews Wait, which, which is sad because uh, live one piece because i personally enjoyed Tribal i heard it was good I've heard a lot of good stuff, but it, my my one thing I didn't like was when you run into Captain Kuro's crew because there's just a bunch of men pretending to be cats. <laughs> and, like, I don't care if it's a live action. You can't make that image of my mind seeing a grown-ass man hiss at you. Just, like, <laughs> take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and he no. just goes, Shh, and I'm just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the next thing, that, next thing that popped up for us was uh, from GameSpot. It was a Marvel's What If. Um, I guess they have a season two trailer and release date. Um, supposed to be supposed to be starting December twenty second. I don't know anything about this. Me neither. Marvel, I Marvel never watched the first season either. I haven't. I haven't watched a lot, but Marvel What Ifs is is really cool, man. Just so explain ifs. explain explain to us what is Marvel What Ifs. Okay, so Marvel What Ifs is kind of like, um, they take characters and they 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 twist them a little bit, or they put them in a different scenario, or they change one detail to see what the outcome would be. Like, there's also other things. Like, there was a comic series called the... Uh, what, what was it called? The Zombies? Uh, Marvel Zombies. Yeah, Mar- Marvel Zombies. They they explore that. <laughs> they explore how Peter Parker was one of the only survivors. Um, where Ultron is actually the, the victor <clears throat> in the battle and gets the Infinity Stones. They've done that. Stuff yeah. like that. Captain... It's, it's a series of stories of what, what could have or what if this happened with this character. Or so, Captain so, Britain versus Captain America. It's not a continuation. Of no, those. no. It's... It, it, it's it's kind of like the sub comics that you would get that were like not contributing to the main story, but were something that was like really cool. Like not not to mention, there's the episode with the Watcher. It's one mm-hmm. of the only things that they've animated recently that had the Watchers in it. So you get you get a bunch of like, what if this person was the Hulk, or what if this person had Iron Man technology and instead? What if T'Challa was Iron Man instead? Mm-hmm. And it gets you get some really unique but also interesting scenarios that you'd be like, "Wow, that sounds really cool." And then, or the uh, what if what if our Doctor Strange was uh, uh, what is his name? What do they call him? Oh, the the spe- no, this the special. You know which one I'm talking about. His was oh, I don't Lu- care. Lucci. <laughs> what was what is? Uh, the right, no, I'm trying to remember because there's like. There's Doctor Strange, and then there's the other the other guy he trapped oh, in the one fuck. movie. And he died. Like, he dies during Endgame because he got his uh his little uh he got the stone ripped out from his forehead. Oh, you talking about? Uh, no, no, that's that's Vision, but that's not Doctor Strange. No, I'm Your talking mama? about like there's there's like an eviler version of Doctor Strange that's not quite evil, but he's also not quite good either. So he's he's more, the guy who plays Mad Mad him. He's he's more he's more evil than good. <laughs> but, That's a great description. Uh, I know I'm I'm uh, the so best star. Aside from the bad descriptions, it's it's just a bunch of what if series that would happen with some of your favorite heroes. It's totally worth what they would be in different ways. There's something worth watching that Marvel made for once, not the other bullshit they make now these days. Well, I I'm not a fan of Loki to be honest with you. I'm not, but it is it is kind of like important to the. Uh, canonical stuff that they have now if you're a huge fan i don't fan know dog it. i thought the last episode was pretty dope it, it's cool but at the same time like i just some things i feel like are over over the top or overly hard and like they're just doing too much <laughs> speaking of doing too much our last yeah. talking point today is about boogie crawling on his hands and knees to daddy keemstar <laughs> <laughs> this dude <laughs> well, why did you have to call him daddy keemstar first that, of all? <laughs> Ew. Because so I'll, I'll I'll send you a picture later. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Such I want him to have that title. <laughs> Man, so I I know you you guys may not know the whole backstory because you don't keep up with this shit. Uh uh-uh. uh So um earlier earlier this year it was on Halloween. 
Mm-hmm. They uh, Boogie dropped a documentary about himself, but his day to day life. It was filmed for about nine, nine months. months. Yeah. Nine yeah. Months. Um, this man has um, put what was it like two hundred fifty thousand dollars into crypto. Jesus. Two hundred thousand um, dollars and hook. Uh, no, hold on. I'm and... getting to that. Calm your anus. <laughs> hey, you don't get it to control the tension of his anus. <laughs> That's Ugh. true. It's well, why is this even a conversation topic? <laughs> <laughs> Move along. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, he spent. Uh, he put two hundred, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand, whatever, into crypto. It doesn't really matter. We talk about that much money. Um, he got up to seven hundred thousand dollars, and then the next day he woke up. It was down to sixty. So he lost all his, he's pretty much lost all his money into crypto. He is now going bankrupt. He uh, reportedly spent two hundred thousand dollars on hookers. Uh, remind you, remind you, um, he did all this without paying off his house. Shit, get a wife. It's cheaper. No, he did. He did have a house. wife. And he oh, well, yeah. it's, um, well, I wonder if she's still around after the two thousand dollar hookers. No, that, this is this is all after the divorce. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so. He he got he got the hookers and uh, again reminding that he oh he he pays monthly on a mortgage. He could have he, been, his house is only worth two hundred thousand at the time. Yeah, so he could have so theoretically he, he could have owned his house. He could have paid off his house instead of getting getting a uh, pussy to pay, uh, pay so instead pussy. of investing in the crypto, he could have owned his house, still paid two k to some hookers, and still had forty eight k left over. And then and no wife. invested like a normal person. <laughs> and also <laughs> on top of this, this is something that was mentioned mentioned on Wall Cow Live. Um, he uh, one of the hookers that he met up with, he uh, sent her autistic son to school, which is pretty cool because it gives him an opportunity. Or she, I don't know the gender of the child, um, gives him an opportunity. Um, but at the same time. What the fuck you doing, Boogie? Uh, um, Big yikes. So now, uh, he is... He's, <laughs> his, say this guy makes more poor decisions than my brother. That, that, oh, no, oh. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm not saying something. <laughs> yeah, everyone's disappointed in their brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. So, back back to the bookster. Book to the Baxter? Um, so... Again, could have paid off all his house, pay his house off and everything. He is now uh, about to lose his house, and his YouTube channel is dwindling. Back to the middle and around again. Um, Maybe he, he's hoping that this video was going to be like the saving thing. That, that's what we all thought. That was, that was totally what the plan was, I bet. Uh, it probably was the plan, but but like do- the documentary is about an hour long, and all it does is bash Boogie. How can you even call yourself a man if you're going to crawl on your hands and knees? I no, we're getting to this. We're getting to that. So um, his relationship with Keemstar has been uh, kind of weird. Um, he went to uh, London, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, he fought... Um... Shit, Wings what's of his... Justice. Uh, Wings of Redemption. Yeah. <laughs> um, this man activated an anime move. Holy shit. <laughs> Wings of Justice. Justice! <laughs> no, let's go punch! Yeah, he went to London. Uh, Keemstar paid Boogie and Wings uh, both ten thousand dollars to go to London and fight. Um, reportedly, according to Boogie, that he lost money going to London. Um, also, another thing I should mention during the documentary, uh, he w- uh, after the documentary was, was dropped, he went to uh, RTU or uh, Review Text USA's uh, stream and was talking about how the documentary or, or documentarian, where the fuck you would call that person? Um, doc. Uh, doc, sure. <laughs> What's uh, up, Doc? Um, supposedly, according to Boogie... Interviewer? A filmmaker. <laughs> uh, sure, a filmmaker. Uh, according to Boogie, the person who uh, filmed Boogie... Um, Filmmaker and Boogie just sounds like a weird guy in a closet. Like filmmaker a Boogie, with a ha- like a camcorder. I don't know. That sounds to me like a very like like a bootleg disco movie. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Um, disco truck drivers. But Boogie allegedly, number two. Allegedly, this Mike, this Mike Clum game, Boogie. Mike Clum guy. Game. Um, he fudged the numbers in the documentary. Oh yeah, I'm sure. According to Boogie. He fudged the numbers, which is kind of interesting in the in like the aspect of like how truthful was this whole documentary? So I'm saying, man, he just wanted that that whole 
money, money, oh, money. Oh, you, you, you think it was all fake and he's actually not broke? Or I, maybe they paid him to get on his hands and knees, and that's why he did it. I I don't th- I think. I think I, it's all real. I, a situation. You, you think it's all real? K. I don't know. It just sounds like people. <laughs> I'm gonna say, pay, to me, pay me 50k. I get on my hands and knees and say, well, "Hold well, on, we're getting to all this." To me, it sounds like begging from a man who has finally reached rock bottom. No, hold up. We're getting to all hey, this. Listen. This guy dates a twenty-year-old. The guy's like forty-eight. I don't think he's mentally. Yeah, stable. he he's also dating a twenty-year-old, and so he's about fifty. Like, that definitely sounds like rock bottom to me. Yes. Um. Oh, they're oh, trauma they're bonding. Trauma is what they say. Trauma, oh, trauma bonding. Yeah, she uh she has daddy issues. She's she's damaged goods. Um. There she did a whole interview on a on a on Boogie's YouTube channel, and it was just. Bad. She was talking about how if Boogie cheated on her, she'll still stay because she loves him so much. Um, Stockholm syndrome. It maybe, yeah. It, it's kind of concerning if you really like look at it. I have a feeling that's all gonna fall apart on him soon enough. I I think so. Um, Boogie reportedly has a bad like health right now. He's not expected to live that much longer, according to him. Um, but. He says, he says that, that, but but, but not, not again, a professional. <laughs> again, like how it, it all I ties back to it, it. kind of is. Uh, I think at this point he realized he fucked up because he's been on YouTube since like oh nine. Mm-hmm. He's he's like one of the OGs. At one point, I told you this. At one point, he was bigger than Smosh. No. Yes. Was he actually? Yes. Yeah. I'm still pressing X. To I, 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 no, at one point he was bigger than Smosh. It was uh, like a two day period. Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> that that is still technically True. correct. It's probably sure, a victory. 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 Still a victory. Hmm? I was gonna say, uh, I'm pretty sure Team Four Star is still more like. Well, now, now. especially now because they're trying to get them back. So, I try to remember where I left off. Um. um the, so we uh, talked uh, about he has a twenty year old girlfriend. Uh huh. Um. So or shall he, I say, he Mr. Teeth is also so boogie. Too. So Keemstar had this yeah, idea about the Wall Cow podcast or Wall Cow Live that I mentioned earlier. He wanted a boogie and wings and also DSP, our favorite fapping man on the internet. Um, can't believe the man jerked off live on like on his live stream. That's gross. <laughs> That's awful. And still has oh, a fucking fan base. I do that fan maybe base. Just like his- Never mind. <laughs> uh, just like it's him. just the strokes of different folks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I getting beaten? Because that joke was awful. That hey, was you, good. Like that you one. didn't even get my seconds. <laughs> I'm too autistic to understand that one. So, uh, Keemstar offered all three of them $50,000 to join this podcast. What? As a sign-on bonus. So, not that's not counting, like, residuals or where the fuck the word is for it. Um, Where has he got the money? Rituals. Keemstar? Keemstar is like a billionaire. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Billionaire? He, From he, what? He has like... Dude, Keemstar is rich. He has more money than God. Bro, God doesn't... I mean, what? <laughs> I believe that about maybe Elon Musk. But not... No, Keemstar, not Keemstar, Keemstar is fucking loaded. Hold up. What's, what's his net? Okay, well, that can be, that can be subjective. Okay. It, it is, but it's a, it's a good, like... <laughs> I was like, I always hear rappers like, being like, Ooh, how, how it goes is, like, there's some Arabian prince over across the water that he's, like, the most wealthy person in the world. So, according to this, Kim Star and then, Elon Musk, and then the guy that owns Virgin Mobile, and then... You're a virgin. Yeah. I am not. Two million dollars? I thought you said <laughs> he was a billionaire. Whatever, you know what I meant. He has, he has, he has a shit ton of money. Uh-huh. So yeah, he well, offered... I also googled how much Boogie Wait, had. Yeah. They also said he had the two million dollars. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Eat my ass. Um, after the pod. Anywho, yeah, after <laughs> the pod, please. Um, so Kimstar offered all this money, one hundred fifty thousand dollars to three people, right? Uh huh. Um, DSP dips out because it's DSP. He doesn't have any self awareness. Um, and Boogie was like, "Okay, let's do it." So um, about what was it, like six months later or something like that, maybe a year. Um, he uh, finally was able to join his podcast, and they recorded it. It wasn't released yet. He goes on Rich's stream from a, uh, RTU, and he went there. I guess he got baited to go there, and Rich got baited to send him in the link. I don't really know the whole story. I don't know what's true, what's not true there. Mm. But uh, he goes on Rich's stream and talks about the podcast, 
And then out of nowhere, Mudahar was like, hey, and we hop on here and started uh, beefing with uh, with Boogie. And then Boogie Start started... Blasting. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Boogie took a bit, big L. And then all of a sudden, Boogie for like 50 times straight, he goes, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It well, wasn't me. The <laughs> Just giving his yeah, voice shaggy. Yeah, Sorry, I, I had, I had some shaggy rolling through my head while you were saying that. Yeah. I apologize. So, um, because of that, Game Star, which we'll play in the video. I need you to fuck off. Like, seriously, fuck off. I need you to get on your fucking hands and knees, have your girlfriend fucking film you, and say, I'm sorry, Keemstar. I'm sorry, Jordy. I'm sorry, fucking uh, Tommy C, Nicholas Diorio, Muta, fucking Tom, everybody that's even fucking cared about the Law po Call podcast. I'm such a selfish attention fucking retard that I just, I want attention. I want to be in conversation so bad that I gave an entire, the, the entire storyline of what's been happening on episode one to fucking Review Tech USA, because I'm so thirsty to just to talk to someone. I'm that big of a fucking loser. Make that video, you piece of shit. I'm sorry, Tommy C. I'm sorry, Daddy Keemstar. I'm sorry, Nicholas De, F De Fiorio. I don't know how to pronounce him. I'm sorry, Jordy. I'm fucking sorry. It was fucking stupid of me to go on Rich's fucking show and give away the fucking storyline. I'm a fucking attention hog piece of shit. It was fucking stupid. I should have left the moment Muda came on. I'm, I'm fucking stupid. And I'm fucking sorry. I understand your decision. I'll hand over any passwords you need, whatever you want. Sorry. Uh, Keemstar sent the video out to, uh, on, I guess, their group chat with Boogie and Wings about how he's a, I think, call him retard a couple of times. Keemstar, uh, this is kind of a bad take from Keemstar. He, uh, he told Boogie to kill himself, okay. which is this is the man who struggled with depression. Even though he uses it as a crutch, you probably you should, probably shouldn't be telling people who are mentally you ill. To... Anybody? You yeah, know, I say can why not? Somebody with <laughs> clinical depression can can go about telling others to kill themselves. How, I, I don't understand how Keemstar is on the platform. Yeah, that's exactly. that's pretty that's pretty valid. Keemstar is uh, he had done a lot He's of so shady toxic. things. Yeah, I think his uh, first YouTube. Uh, a channel was something like he would pick on people in like COD or Halo or something like He's that. Saying, there's a, there's a nasty feeling, and what it is is sometimes people just love a good bad guy. <laughs> it's just yeah. There's just some people out there can just like they'll admire the qualities that they probably shouldn't, but there there are some people that do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Kim was threatened to kill uh, to uh, kick Boogie off. <laughs> I mean, it was a date, but uh, he was trying to kick Boogie off. Um, he told Boogie to get on his hands and knees and crawl, and apologize to everyone who's involved with the podcast. And this man, almost fifty, did it. You watched it. It's it's a new low. Like personally, I always liked Boogie. I feel like he, uh, especially like uh, his childhood story. It it's just it. I it, I would say maybe it made me like uh, g give him a benefit of the doubt. But it's, it's all like it's boo hoo, poor, poor me. me. Oh no, oh, my, no life my life is awful. awful. It's like, like well, well, you put, you put yourself put in this situation. In this situation. Like, Why do I feel bad poor, for this? Poor, poor choices, hundred percent. But it's like it's just like Boogie. I was, I thought he was funny. I really liked him. And then he crawled on his hands and knees and called Daddy. Uh, he called Keemstar Daddy Keemstar. And supposedly, according to uh, Chris Denark, which is uh, in Keemstar's uh, camp, this was all legit. Oh, oh. Uh, it was. It wasn't comedy. It wasn't for uh, I, whatever. It's it, a sticker. <laughs> um, he really just took what Keem said to heart and actually crawled to another man, and that made me lose so much respect. It? We don't think that was fake at all, or that's I, according to Chris Denark, it was not fake. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my goodness! That's so that's sad. So it, it, I lost all respect for Boogie. I don't know, like, and to play like devil advocate a little bit, 
I can un kind of understand why he would do it because he's pretty broke. He spent all money on hookers. Um, and also he played the crypto game, and you shouldn't be playing crypto games. Um, so was, just, there was just no market for like it. Like I said, it like, there was like there were some places that were trying to make that feature where you could use your crypto to exchange for actual products. But then why the fuck wouldn't I just use a dollar? <laughs> It was that was my entire thought process from the beginning to the end of it, and I'm, I didn't invest into it, and I'm all right. Like, why do you got to invest in a whole other currency and the currency you already have is worth value? Well, he, di he did it, and it did not work out for him. I think the reason why he crawled to Keem was because of the oh! sign-on bonus, which we don't... I mean, trying to pay that mortgage, I guess. We don't know factually if the sign-on bonus was actually given. My print is done. Do you think that do you, he'll uh, like he'll say something about it? Whether he I did or not? I don't know if they'll actually talk about the sign-on bonus being given out. Maybe, but we don't know if they're if the sign-on bonus was given to Boogie or Wings. And according to what I know and what Keemstar has stated, he is making money off that podcast. So the other people you that are involved, right? So like uh, I. Uh, Mudahar and I don't remember now two other guys. A uh, Turkey Tom's one of them. Uh, the uh, the third guy that they labeled them labeled them the farmers because that's the law cow. I, they're not making anything off of it. It all goes to the cows, as they label them. The so, cows. Yeah, so they have like uh, two different tiers. So like the cows, how very farm, and the farms farmers, which is Mudahar, um, Turkey Tom, the other guy. So I think Boogie right now is in such like a uh, desperate way um, to keep yeah, his house and everything that he does oh is okay with degrading himself to an absolute new new low. I mean, rather than low and lower himself as a person, though, why didn't he just lower his standards and just like you know talk to the bank, find a way? Like if he's not currently in debt on his, any mortgage, he could just. He no, is, though. He, has, he owes, like, half the amount still, apparently. Yo, okay, well, then that's even... Ah! Yeah, that man needs to start talking financial with himself and start looking at things through a different standard. Yeah, he, uh, there was a, there was a communication about him just selling the house, and... Well, at this point, he's gonna either sell it or lose it. It's, there's no choice. Yeah, it's all he wants to do, which could probably either. <laughs> uh, I think he said, uh, the house is worth about half a mil. It, I think he should it's just lower his standards of living and probably start trying to work on rebuilding his channel and more or less rebuilding himself well, up his, to be his better. His content <laughs> just isn't it's worth it anymore, anymore. It's, it's just it's subpar. subpar so so well, and that's it. what I mean. Like he, needs, he needs a new new scope in life. The book is like, I have 4, four million book. subscribers. I can't leave YouTube, even though he gets like 10,000 views, if that. The, the problem with Boogie is he when he started YouTube, he was like 600-pound guy doing fat guy things. So, like... uh. One of his most popular videos is playing this Francis character, which is a typical nerd that gets angry a lot. Mm -hmm. So he'll be throwing Mountain Dew around because he's trying to win. Uh, he's trying to beat like a dungeon and, and wow. Uh, which, t even How today. That which is already dead. Even, <laughs> even today was pretty hilarious. But when Boogie started losing weight, he has lost about 200 pounds since then. You, it, people are not coming to his channel for the same shit anymore. Especially no. as time has changed. The fat guy routine is not working. And him being, like, rageful is not working. Um, I think uh, when Boogie was talking to Rich, I think he told a little bit of a lie. He was saying to Rich that from 09, uh, 07 or 09 or whatever until today, he has only made $1.3 million from ad revenue on YouTube. Now, considering... Oh, only, but this is also like a very large span, uh, a large stretch of time, and Boogie being one that like one of the bigger YouTubers during like the Think early stages. Though, that's still like a hundred grand a year almost. That's a very livable wage. That's, that's over really over over twelve years. years. Yeah. But it's but he has made a YouTube. shit ton of money, and it's all gone. I understand he got divorced, so his wife got half. I believe. Well, um, he, I remember him talk about it for like a couple of years ago. I think his wife got like 500,000. Really? Um, 
and he was a substantial sum. That, yeah. That's a like that's a good amount. That's, that's a, a hell of a check. For a while. A um, <laughs> but I understand the divorce, um, so on and so forth. But like, even if you had to give up half, so if you gave up half, so you automatically knew he should have had at least five hundred thousand in the bank still. Yep. He wouldn't have to work a day in his life again. Wait, yeah, only five hundred k? That's not enough to live off the rest of your life. Uh, he, but he's also like, it is for him because he's like, he's almost fifty. He's about sure, if dead. He, if he is actually about dead, he claims he is. But like, if he I, I know dead. he has cancer, but it's not like a fast moving cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, that's not a lot of money when you really think about it. I mean, I was about to say, yeah, if, and if it gets to the point where he needs to start paying for treatments and stuff like that, it's going to go quick. Yeah. But, like, he wouldn't have to be in a situation where every day is, like... It, where it's a stress, you know? It, it wouldn't have to be that. He could still... I, I By work, I mean, like, actually... I mean, yeah. You, may, you have to it. work. Yeah. He would still probably do YouTube and make, like... A couple hundred bucks, a thousand dollars here and there. I was gonna say, as long as but, he lived within his means and didn't try to live beyond his means like he does, then yeah, that money would probably stretch further. But, but yeah, the I, fact is, he likes to live beyond his means and make mistakes with his money, so there's no way that would have lasted. So, I think we beat this topic to death. Yeah. Um, I mean... I th- it could probably go on longer, but... I, 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 Boogie is one of those things, it's like a DSP, you could talk about it forever. There's all the, all the history of Boogie, Boogie Lime, Boogie uh, sh- shooting a, uh, uh, well, it, it boogie, he's boogieing down. Down for the boogie. He uh, oh, yeah. shot the air. Near yeah, someone. he uh, he shot a warning shot in the air, and he he's a felon now. Um, but yeah, um, I think disco ball lowers out of the ceiling. Jesus Christ! So before we end today. Anything you guys want to say? Uh, any games you guys been playing? Uh, I mean, I've been playing. Uh, I'm trying to Ryan. play Baldur's Gate Baldur. three more, but no one wants to play with me. Oh, oh! <laughs> you guys want to get I'm a actually, Baldur's Gate game going? I got it. I have, I have actually like go. three game like playthroughs going, but like it's so busy with life, I have no time to play it. <laughs> I would not be able to play. I wouldn't be oppo- uh, being opposed to you know start a but story. In- but unfortunately, Thanksgiving is coming. So Thanksgiving is coming. Yes. Jesus Christ! Christ everyone, what? bar your doors. <laughs> and Cam's over here like, my Thanksgiving was last month. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's true. Can, can Canadians have their own Thanksgiving? <clears throat> I ain't got my own Thanksgiving, but I'm finna take off your plate. Yeah, where's the where's the Mexicans Thanksgiving? <laughs> Actually, that's What's probably that more like uh, Dia de Morta. Uh, uh, well, the Day of the Dead isn't exactly like the yeah, I, I, yeah but, whole, it's like a whole week. Yeah, I know. If you're but traditional, like, but like, it starts like I think around. They all November. get to, like everybody gets together and makes a whole bunch of food and stuff. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, but half of that food don't go for them though. Half of that goes on the graves and that's stuff, true. or it goes to the fucking. Um, what are you called? The ofrendas. I was gonna say it must pay to be a late night grave. Grave digger, you know, just kind of. There's, there's a lot more respect in the public <laughs> I know, for I that. Know. <laughs> I'm just All right, Panda, what are you playing? Uh, I have, I, man. I, 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 th- I feel like you set me up for failure here. You know what I'm playing. <laughs> um, bathing with dead four three. <laughs> I have. Panda, uh, could you? I've been you playing. Batted. I've been playing Shower with Your Dad Simulator. Like, no. Sure it is hit <laughs> I said bad, sure but all right. Uh, it's animated. It's said full frontal nudity. It's, no. it, it's harem. It's harem daddy simulator. Harem daddy. It's just a, it's just a harem of cheeks. Oh, no. It's a harem it's, of cam. It's all different cheeks. It's all, there's like a sophisticated one. There's a <laughs> boy one. <laughs> Man, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Cam, we need to do a photo shoot with you so you make a bad boy oh and just God. like... What size leather jacket? No! It'll be, a, it'll be a point and click adventure. <laughs> Being a bad boy is already cringe. <laughs> Just saying it alone actually adds to the fact that I'm not gonna lie. Every time we say bad boy, I feel worse about it. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, while I'm done gagging on the mic. You're done you're done gagging. You're done right, gagging you like Boogie. Alright. I guess well, it's time to die. Have a, we're gonna go die now. Have a good day, everybody.
<laughs> no, and, and good and happy Thanksgiving to those who are uh, celebrating. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, really? if you're, especially if you're not uh, Canadian, because uh, fuck Canadians. And if you mix, you can get you some. <laughs> Listen, listen, that's I don't want to be the big guy syrup. that stands up for the Canadians. <laughs> you haven't even gave me maple syrup once, bitch. We'll point him out. That's the reason. The, yeah, he foresaw this. Canadians have foresight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, Canadians, Canadians don't have superheroes. They have, uh, they are superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> we have hindsight. Yeah, they have... Uh, Captain Insight. Ca- Captain <laughs> 